Hey, Autumn Athletes, Larry Sorensen here. Today, I'm going to connect with Christina Elder to find out what makes her an Autumn Athlete that's not done yet. Before we get started, please remember, if you like our content, like, subscribe, and ding that bell for notifications. All right, let's get this thing started. Christina, thanks so much for joining us today. Why don't you kick us off with a brief introduction of yourself? Hi, yeah, I'm Christina Elder, and I am 36 years old. I have a wonderful husband named Tyler and three beautiful children. I've got two daughters, Jocelyn and Tatum, and I have a son, um, who turned four recently named Turner. And I reside in Plattsmouth, Nebraska, which is a pretty small little town just south of Omaha. Um, I've been living in Nebraska my whole life. So I've been an athlete here in the elements. And I'm also a physical education and health teacher of 12 years. I teach high school and junior high. And I've been a track coach for 12 years as well, which keeps me very busy. And I love it. And it's a blessing. And I, that's pretty, and I'm also an athlete. So I continue to pursue track and field, uh, growing up a soccer player. I just felt like I didn't have enough time in track. And so I just keeping it going. I love it. It's my passion. Tell us a little bit in general about your fitness history, sports activities, and so forth up until starting this master's career. So I grew up a soccer player starting at age nine. Uh, I was very inspired by like Mia Hamm. I don't know if you remember Mia Hamm and like kind of that big women's world cup movement at the time. And I knew that I was always kind of sporty and a tomboy growing up. And so sports were always a passion of mine. And I just kind of gravitated towards soccer. A lot of that was because of Mia Hamm and that whole movement and played that all through childhood. I didn't really have interest in any other sport because I'm kind of a perfectionist. So I wanted to get really good at that sport. Uh, my parents didn't have to motivate me or anything. I just wanted to go to practice. I wanted to train wanted to run. I've always loved running. That was my favorite part of soccer was the running, which is everyone thought was crazy. I loved the conditioning part of soccer. And I knew something was different about me kind of in elementary PE. I just remember like the pacer test, the fitness pacer test that everybody hates so much. I was like, yes, like secretly so excited about doing that test so I could try to beat the boys. <laughs> and like my mom even had to pick me up from school early in fifth grade because I ran it so hard that I passed out at the end. And so she had to come pick me up. She's like, you've got to be the only kid in America that would do that. <laughs> and so yeah, I continued to play soccer all the way through high school actually, and chose soccer over track because of the same seasons in Nebraska and got recruited into college for soccer and mm -hmm. continued to play till I got hit in the head too much. And the track coach noticed my speed. And so he invited me to come try a practice. And he was like, we'll give you a scholarship. He like popped me in lane one of the 400 of some small meet without, I've never came out of blocks, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I ran like a 58 second 400. He's like, we'll keep you on the team. Yep. And that's where my track journey kind of started. So that was my sophomore year in college and and kind of running track ever since. So have you had any kind of uh, setbacks or injuries along the way? Yeah, very minor. I've been very lucky. Um, I had a lot of concussions. That was my issue. So in high school, I had two um, pretty serious concussions. And back then the concussion protocol wasn't as advanced. And so they're like, oh, is your headache gone? Okay, you're good. Like go back in and play. <laughs> so that's probably why I accumulated more concussions just because the technology wasn't there. The testing wasn't there. Um, so I had two concussions in high school that were pretty serious. And then in college, I had two more. And so my junior year, the trainers were kind of finally like, I think we need to be done with soccer. Like we need to retire, which was a sad moment for me, but it was a blessing that I had track to fall back on because I am so competitive. I just didn't see myself being done with sports. And so track was right there to kind of pick me up. And that's why still to this day, I love giving back to the sport because it did so much for me at a time that seemed, you know, almost desperate. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm done being an athlete. It's going to end this way for me. And track was there for me. Tell us all of your uh, accomplishments, whether it be track and field and, or even from soccer. So back in high school, um, I was all state, I think two years in a row, and my team, we made it to the state championship twice. I was a defender. Um, and that was a big accomplishment for my school at the time because they had never made it that far in state. Fast forwarding to college, I was the defensive player of the year for my, for my college as a freshman and a sophomore. I was also a team captain. 
which was really an honor. And I love being able to be a leader. I was all conference, I think once or twice, I think twice in soccer. And then in college track, I kind of worked my way up, which was really cool. At first I was very, I wouldn't say mediocre. I was, I was good, but I was maybe placing in the top five in conference in the 400 meter dash was kind of my specialty. And then by my senior year, I was a two-time all American placing sixth in the country in the 400 meter dash. And I got my time from starting my sophomore year was the first time, you know, I've ever ran it. I ran a 58, like high 58, I think like 58.9. And then by my senior year, I was at a 55.2. Um, so I shaved off. That's a lot of time in a 400. So I really shaved off a lot of time to get to that point. And then the coolest part was my four by four uh, team in college, we were able to get eighth place. So we were all Americans, which was kind of not expected. So we were able to place in NCAAs as well, which was really, really cool. So that was how I got to end my senior year, which was really neat. So fast forward after college, I was kind of burnt out, um, decided to get married, have kids, um, find a job, do kind of those real world things. And then the passion, I just realized running road races and stuff just wasn't really for me. And I wanted to stay fit and active and I love training and I love working out and the road race scene just kind of, I'm like, this is not natural for me. I'm definitely a sprinter. Uh, so I kind of started to get the itch again after I had my daughter, which is my middle child. She's about to turn seven. And I started training on the track again, kind of more for the mile and the 800. And then I got pregnant with my son. <laughs> so I kind of had to put halt with, on training. And then after, you know, I had my son, then COVID hit. So that was another break, which gave me some more time to train. Um, once I started getting back into it, I was kind of focusing more on the 1500 and the 800 kind of coming from a road racing scene. So I was a, to think about it, I think a four-time national champion in the 1500 and then a four-time national champion in the 800, like during that kind of stint of two years. And then last year was kind of my last year running the 1500. Um, and I was able to get another national championship in the 15 and the eight, and then got the cool experience of going to worlds, uh, world championships as a fresh 35 year old, went to Poland and it was life-changing. I was able to get a medal and a bronze medal in the 800 by like two tenths of a second. <laughs> Middle distance medal. And then turned around on the four by 200 meter relay and we were not, we're, we're world champions in the four by two. And that was kind of last year and this year's going well. I guess I could say this year, just last weekend, yep. I was runner up in the 400. So I'm kind of going back to the 400 in the 800 which took a while because I was comparing myself so much to my collegiate 400 meter self. And I needed to kind of take a step back and say, it's okay that I'm not running 55 seconds right now. Like <laughs> you can go back to it. You know, a 60 flat is very impressive at my age. Um, so kind of going back to my roots with the 400. So I was able to get runner up in the 400, um, this last weekend, and our four by four team, which we kind of put together some ladies across the country. We actually broke the American and the world record in the four by four with like a four minute flat 0.11. So uh, oh. just happened yeah. <laughs> a couple days <Yeah>. ago. <laughs> what is the future look like? What's your next uh, goal or goals, whether it be times or events and or uh, any particular meets coming up? I'm excited for outdoor um, I kind of had a hiccup in the fall. I've been diagnosed with arthritis, which was kind of shocking, um, since I've never had any joint problems at all in my life. And so I've been lucky that way. And so arthritis has kind of taught me a lot over the last couple of months about patience and gratitude and being, you know, thankful for the gift that God gave me, um, with running, and so kind of working through this arthritis and being patient with it, I took indoor season off. So really the first indoor meet I ran was actually nationals. So it's kind of the kickstart to my outdoor season. I'm doing well now. I still have little flare ups here and there in my knees, but I'm still able to train and run and race. So I'm grateful for that. I'll be racing in quite a few collegiate meets in the spring. Um, locally, I've kind of made good relationships with a lot of the college coaches out here. 
they call me mom. They're like, mom's here. <laughs> so I love running against the college girls because they push me and challenge me. And I love to be able to kind of mentor those girls too and um, inspire them. I love that. So I'll run in some college meets and then looking into the summer, going to nationals for outdoor in Sacramento. And then the big, big goal and focus is outdoor worlds in Sweden, which is in August. So I've got a long season ahead. Just give us an overall idea of uh, your training regimen and what you do to be successful. I'm very lucky to have some wise coaches that kind of help me program and rein things in because I've always been very much like a sled dog mentality. Like you give me something to do, I'm going to go do it like the best that I can. So um, it makes it easy for a coach athlete relationship because my coach knows, okay, if I write her up this and I want her to do this, like she's going to go get it done. And so sometimes he actually has to kind of intervene and be like, okay, if you're not feeling great on that last rep, like maybe we could, should reconsider another rep. Like you can just call it quits. Whereas I'll push myself through. So having a coach's wisdom has been huge for me because if I've designed my own training, I feel like I get really caught up in, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing enough? Am I not doing enough? And then that's taking away the focus of, I just want to go out and do the work. Um, I usually only have about an hour, hour and a half time every day that's to myself. And that time is very valuable to me. And I, I know that that time spent alone, I don't even have a training partner. I've kind of harnessed the goodness of just being by myself out there on that quiet track. It's just, there's something about it that just makes me a better mom. It makes me a better teacher, coach, all the other things, all the, all the other hats that I wear. So I'm out there for about an hour, hour and a half, depending on the day I generally have. So in season, I have one day that's speed work. And so it's just pure sprints, um, working on that speed work. I feel like that's been the hardest thing to get back mm -hmm. after taking 10 years off of sprinting. I feel like the speed is slowly coming back, but it also could be my age. I think there's limitations there, but I'm trying not to put a ceiling on myself. I try to, you know, I'm like, I think it'll come back. I just got to keep working. So top end speed for one day and the, it's usually like a Monday. And then a Tuesday for me is usually my main workout or my hard workout. And it could be 400 base training or 800 base training, just kind of depending on the week. And it's usually pretty hard, pretty lactic. And then I'll also lift that day as well. So my strength coach has me do a lift paired with that heavy day. So that way, Wednesday, Thursday are recovery for me. And that could be a 15 minute jog or a bike ride or even a walk, just kind of depending how I'm feeling. And I'm usually give myself some grace. And so if I know my body is telling me like, Christina, you need the day off. Like you just need to go home and take a nap. Then I'll go do it. Mm -hmm. which I've gotten wiser with age. Cause in college, I wouldn't have done that. I would have pushed through. And then, you know, you see the repercussions by the end of the week. If I have a meet or something like that, I'm still tired. Um, so luckily wisdom has kicked in a little bit in my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> so I know to take those recovery days. And then generally like Friday would be a pre-comp day. And then Saturday would be the meet. So it's kind of nice. Um, I feel like my coach has really designed that well. And it works good for me. Because Monday, Tuesday, you know, are paired well together. And then I have a Friday, Saturday meet and those kind of pair together. So I feel like my body is ready to roll again by Saturday, kind of like leading into it from that Friday workout. So yeah. it seems to be working really well for me. And then a Sunday is either a jog mobility. I do a lot of mobility work and, or just a walk with my family. I just, I just honestly listen to my body. There's some days that some weeks that I need two days off, there's some where I don't need any. So I've just kind of learned myself and I've learned the signs of, I have a whoop fitness tracker. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but mm. that kind of tells me to, it'll kind of give me a warning. Like your HRV is low, like your heart variability, which means you're not recovered or your resting heart rate is higher than normal. And so I can kind of look at that and track that. And I journal a lot. Um, I journal every single day about, you know, how I'm feeling, how the workout felt. And I feel like that kind of helps me to make decisions based off of letting my coach know, Hey, I don't know if I can do this full workout today or I have to push it back a day. Cause that's definitely happened before. And you just have to be flexible cross training. I don't do a ton. 
Um, unfortunately, I don't love cross training. I wish I did. Like, I kind of like biking, I guess, but I'd rather just go on a walk <laughs> if I'm not running. Yeah. But I'm very, I lift twice a week and I lift really heavy. Um, and I feel like that's made a big difference too, at my age, keeping me really strong. And I actually really enjoy lifting. Whereas in college, I absolutely hated it. Give us your go-to 400 based workout of the track today. I would say my favorite one. I mean, on the day that I'm doing it, it's not my favorite because it's hard, <laughs> but I know it works, um, is actually a broken 400. So my coach will have me do um, my whole race day warm up. So treating it like a race. And then I even kind of get nervous, like it's a race, which is cool. Cause I feel like I can really harness that adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And when it comes time for race day, I have that confidence because of these workouts. Um, so I'll do my full race day warm up routine, everything, drink the same thing, eat the same thing. And then I have 300 meters at my race pace. And then I have a 30 second rest right into a hundred meters with everything I have left. Mm -hmm. So, and then that time, you know, you put the two times together and that's a projected 400 meter race time. Mm -hmm. And so those workouts, and sometimes he makes me do two in a day, which is really hard. Like I'll take a full recovery after that first one, like 10 minute rest, mm -hmm. and then go into a 250, 30 second rest, 150. And I am just I am gassed after that, but looking at the times and knowing that I put that work in and how hard it was and how much it hurt when I get on that line or get in the blocks for the 400, I have so much confidence because I know, Hey, like I'm in 59 shape or I'm in 60 flat shape. And so I love it. Cause it's a good little time trial and I can do it on my own pretty well. I've just kind of learned to harness that energy by myself and get those workouts in. And then I know what I'm capable of. I'm like, okay, if I can hit that time in practice, I know I can run faster in a meet. And it's cool because he'll have me do that, you know, usually multiple times throughout a season. And so it's cool to see my times drop too, knowing that I'm getting fitter and ready like to do an actual race model and feel pretty good and know that I'm not going to collapse with 20 meters to go. So that's kind of my go-to. Uh, broken 400 courtesy okay. of coach Aaron Yoder. <laughs> Tell us your approach to diet and nutrition and to rest. Very, I take it very seriously. In college, I kind of started to figure out how important it was, but you know, most of us college kids, it's like, we're running on four hours of sleep. Sometimes I don't know how I did that. It's incredible, but I make sure that I always get at least seven and a half hours. I feel like I've learned my body enough that if I get less than that, it's not good. Um, and I'm not recovered. And I can tell by my metrics the next morning that I just, my body is not fully recovered. Nutrition is very serious. I'm very serious about nutrition as well. It's a huge passion of mine. It's one of those things that I love continuing to learn about and kind of treat myself as an N1 experiment sometimes like, okay, this worked and this didn't work and that's okay. I'm definitely with my arthritis flare up. I had to cut out a couple of things. I had to cut out dairy, which was super sad. <laughs> But unfortunately, my body just randomly developed an intolerance to it. So I had to make some adjustments there. Um, inflammation went way down. And recently, a big one is I cut out caffeine, which is crazy in athlete world because most people are consuming caffeine. And I said, you know what, if I can do hard things, if I can do hard workouts, I can cut out caffeine. And I love my coffee. And everyone that knows me knows how much I love coffee. So um, I cut it out. And the first week was terrible. And the second week I feel like a new person and it's my arthritis has gone way down cutting out the caffeine. So hopefully I can add some like half calf coffee in or decaf or something pretty soon. But those are some major adjustments. Um, I pay a lot of attention to my protein intake. Um, I'm a, kind of an animal based athlete. So I'm very high and heavy on red meat and um, chicken and pork. And I eat a lot of meat. I eat a lot of eggs. And then I kind of I focus, my carbohydrates are from fruit. It seems to be the best thing that I tolerate. Um, I don't eat any grains at all. I'm kind of a special case where I have a lot of autoimmune past history problems. So I have to be way more diligent about these things where other athletes are able to eat bagels and bread and all this stuff. Whereas my body just does not thrive that way. And so I'm gluten-free, I'm grain-free and I avoid a lot of vegetables that have kind of flared up my gut 
problems. And so I'm very heavy fruit, very heavy meat and eggs. So I have a very basic diet, but it works well for me and making sure I'm getting the adequate protein intake, um, along with the sleep and the hydration and the electrolytes and all the things. So, but now I'm very intuitive about it. I used to have to track things, but now my body lets me know you're hungry, you need to eat. And so I'm very passionate about teaching my young athletes, my females about that as well, because it's so much to do with our hormones. And so many of our female runners are underfed, um, which is called causing red S, which is relative energy deficiency syndrome, which is causing like the absence of a period and different hormone issues. So I'm very passionate about teaching the fe- a lot of females too about, okay, this is how you should be fueling yourself. If you're having these signs and symptoms, you're underfueled. Um, Cause it is so prevalent in the running world. It's gotten a lot better, but I think a lot of females get locked into, I need to look a certain way. I need to be skinny to be taken seriously as a runner. Um, and then they're just seeing all sorts of endocrine problems and their hormones are tanking and they're having adrenal problems and all these things. So I'm very passionate about it. What keeps you motivated at this point to keep doing it at this level? And then kind of tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, how do you do it? like the mechanics of it. I always say I'm not motivated every day. And I tell my high school athletes the same thing. My high school kids, it's, I am definitely not motivated every day. I may be motivated once a week. And so for me, it's all discipline and it's making it a priority. And this is part of my life. It's something that I love and it's going to become a priority and I'm going to fit it in somehow. There's some things where I do have to have grace because I know I have responsibilities in life. I'm a mother. So if I have a sick child, like that's my child takes priority, but generally even on days like that, I'm still able to fit in something. It's incredible. It's like, okay, while my kid is napping, I'm going to do my work and get my work in or what have you. So I think when you make something a priority and you're passionate about it, it you will find a way to fit it in. And I don't like to make excuses. I'm definitely one of those people that I know consistency is what makes the biggest difference from what I've seen. Definitely ever since I started training again, after I had my son, I know that that consistency over time is where you reap the benefits from. And then it kind of just becomes a habit, you know? So when I'm doing it every day and I have that discipline, it's, it's a habit. And so if I missed my training, I feel like something didn't go right. Like the day doesn't seem right to me because I missed my training. Yeah. And honestly, I, I enjoy training over just going to the gym, if that makes sense. And that's why I love being an athlete because there's a purpose and there's a goal that I have that I want to achieve. And so it's not just going and working out to work out, which is still great. And a lot of people that's their goal. But for me, training is different than just working out. It's training. And it's also me time. It's a, a, it's a very important part of my day that gives me, gives me life as an athlete and gives me a piece of me. That's very important. And so I know that one hour is going to change who I am and all my other aspects in my occupation as a mother, as a coach. And so I know that I'm a better mother coach and all those things, wife, if I get my training in, um, because it fills me up, it fills up my cup. Like I can't just be filling other people's cups all day. I want to fill up my own, um, as well. So I think the discipline aspect is huge and making a goal for yourself is huge. So goal, and then come up with a plan. Where am I going to fit it in? And so for me, Um, It works best in the mornings for me to fit it in. Luckily, as a high school track coach, I have all the facilities at my disposal. So I'm very lucky. So I get to work. I drop my kids off at the bus. I get right to the track before I have to start go into my classroom and start working. I get my work in. I get to change. I'm a PE teacher. So I put on another pair of sweats (laughs) and then, you know, I'm at work. And then generally right now while I'm coaching, I work all day and then I coach and then I have to go to the weight room after practice and go lift. And so my days in the spring are very long, but I've learned that over time it pays off to stay consistent Mm -hmm. and I might have to go to bed earlier because I'm really tired because I've had a full day at school. Um, And so there's little sacrifices that are, that are definitely made, but that's where I'm grateful for my husband because he picks up a lot of slack um, in terms of, Hey, I'll, I'll make dinner, honey. So you can sit on the couch and put your feet up and use the TheraBoots or whatever you need to do to recover. 
or he'll help with the kids or whatever have you. So that's without him, I couldn't do it. And without the support of my community and my school, I wouldn't, it'd be tough too. So I'm lucky to have so many people that support me that it just kind of, I'm like, I know it can get done and it kind of drives me to keep going. And, um, I think setting those goals for myself and seeing what my body is capable of has just given me life. There's my favorite quote is I want to truly learn to live and not just be alive. And so to me, it's like, I don't want to just float through life. I want to pursue things. I want to do things. I want to inspire others. I want to make an impact. And I feel like that's what it means to live, to truly live. So we're going to do a, we're going to have a little fun here and do a little rapid fire question and uh, find out a few quirky things about you. Sound good? Cool. Okay. All right. What's the song you're going to pick out of the playlist that's going to get you pumped up today for that workout? Oh my gosh, this is going to sound ridiculous, but I actually love worship music and so, okay. <laughs> which okay. my friends give me so much crap for. They're like, that's so unmotivating. It's like sleepy time music. But sometimes I'm like, Lord, I need some motivation. And so um, I'll put some worship music in and it just kind of gets me in the right mindset of, you know, God, I feel like I constantly get that reminder of, Hey, I gave you this gift and it's beautiful. Running's beautiful. And um, that actually is what motivates me is some worship music if I need it. So, so do you have a specific song or a specific group? I actually love Christian rap. So <laughs> Lecrae, I love Lecrae. So I, he's kind of my go-to guy. All right. Very good. Now you mentioned that you like meat. So rare, medium, or cooked? Ooh, medium rare. Medium rare. All medium right. Rare. I just had a steak too, and it was medium rare. <laughs> my husband just made it. <laughs> I'm with you on the medium rare. All right. Yeah. How about your favorite book? Right now, Sydney McLaughlin's new book. Okay. Um, yep. She's the 400 hurdler. Yep. I love her. And that book is so good. I just started it. I'm a couple chapters in and it's wonderful. So my, my favorite book kind of changes. I like autobiographies though, which is odd because most of my friends are really into the suspense and the mystery books and stuff like that. Nope. I just love autobiographies <laughs> of okay. athletes. What superpower would you want for a day? I think being able to transport from like one place to the next. Okay. My husband and I talk about that all the time. So coming back from Poland, we've been <laughs> like literally every day. We're like, we just want to go back to Poland to get some pierogies. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so I wish I could just like transport to Poland and go eat and then come back home, you know? So when it comes to eggs, scrambled, poached, or over easy? Ooh, that changes weekly as well. Um, right now I'm on a scrambled egg kick, but then I kind of get sick of scrambled eggs and then I'm over easy. So I go over easy, scrambled. And then if I'm going to put an egg on a burger, it's going to be a fried egg and it's going to be like over hard. All right. So Christina, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to tell us what makes you an autumn athlete that's not done yet. Mm -hmm. I want to close up here by giving you the opportunity to address our audience and just give us some final thoughts. There's so many inspirational people around us. I know I was inspired by another master's athlete who is one of my best friends now and she inspired me and running, racing against her on the track. So I just walked right up to her and I was like, I want to be your friend, <laughs> you know, tell me how you do this. And so I think using the community around you and people that inspire you, um, just not being afraid to ask questions or, you know, get ideas from someone, whether that's training or sharing ideas, building relationships and communication is the best. That's what motivates me you know, when I don't have motivation too, is reaching out to other athletes and seeing, you know, how are you doing? Or can you give me some motivation or some inspiration? And I think within definitely at our age, I think community is everything and just finding other like-minded people that are motivated just like you or want to be better or better themselves and kind of linking up with those people and going hand in hand, mm -hmm. you know, sticking with positive people. And I think that's, that's my best words of wisdom is find a good community and positive people. There's so many people out there that want to help and, you know, inspire you and help you and, you know, just, just find your tribe. Fantastic advice. All right. Mm -hmm. Christina Elder, everybody. She is definitely an autumn athlete. That's not done yet. Remember, keep moving, set your own goals and trade hard to achieve them. Thanks so much for watching everybody. And we will see you next time. Thanks, Larry.